ChatGPT has so many hidden tricks that almost nobody uses. So in this video, I'll put together a list of my top 12 all time favorites. Some of them are actually brand new. So you could get a lot more out of ChatGPT. The first one is you could actually get ChatGPT to remember your writing style but for every single and different use case. So instead of giving it a custom instruction in the account setting to do that, I'm gonna show you this other trick here. So here's how I'm gonna use it. First, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to analyze a piece of writing. This is gonna be email first. And I'm just gonna say, analyze this for tone, style, format, and reading level. Now I'm gonna paste an email that I wrote myself now, ChatGPT understands how I like to write emails based on a different tone, style, format, and my reading level, and anything else you wanted to analyze it for. Here's the key part now. Remember my writing style for emails to my team specifically and store this to memory. So anytime I ask you to write an email to my team, use this information. Now, this is only the way I write emails to my team. This is the tone I use for that. When I write to clients, it's gonna be a different tone. So now you could see it's updated its memory with that set of instruction. And now if I ask it to write an email to my team, it uses that memory to write this email. So I don't have to have prompts back and forth. And the key with this is now I could do it the same for when I write a blog post or when I write a YouTube title and when I write emails to clients or anyone else and have separate memories for that. So it will pull in that information every single time I ask it to write something new and knows my tone, my writing style, the reading level for just about anything that I'm gonna write with without setting up any custom instructions. Next on our list, ChatGPT could also send you daily or weekly reminders. Each morning at 8 a.m., send me a report that has three new updates in AI. Focus on updates from major companies first, OpenAI, Google, and Anthropic. Now, this creates a task for itself, so every morning it will send you a reminder and you could turn on desktop notifications, so it'll just notify you right on your desktop. Now, these could be paused, deleted, edited, and they have a whole page for scheduling things, so any type of reminder requiring web access or not web access, it could do that for you right inside of ChatGPT. The next one I wanted to show you is inside of ChatGPT projects, which have become probably my favorite ways to use ChatGPT. So with projects, you could basically organize things into contained categories. So I have one where all my script writing takes place or any type of AI prompts I have, I have stored here. So what you could do is when you create a new project, it has a hidden setting right here. You could click this gear icon here and it lets you create something called project only memory. So these projects can only have access to their own memory. So any chat you have, any custom instructions you have inside of this project, that's all the project is able to see. So that keeps things very contained. I do this all the time when I just want the project to look into my files that I've uploaded as its knowledge base. Instead, if you have it on default, this will access your memories from outside of chat. So it will just know everything about you that is based on your account wide information. And that option cannot be changed after you create a project, but inside of every project, you could also add your set of custom instructions here. You could also add any type of knowledge base to this project too. So in this case, it makes sense to add your files here, make it self-contained. So this becomes a central knowledge base and doesn't pull anything from your previous conversations outside of this project. Now, the next one is a recent upgrade, which is a big upgrade to ChatGPT personalization. So let me go to my settings here. And you have this personalization tab, and I already have my custom instructions that I've used for a long time, but a lot of people actually have not set up any custom instruction. So to make it easier, they've included a bigger list of things you could choose from. So these, like professional, friendly, candid, these will change the tone and how ChatGPT responds to you at the account level, which makes it really, really useful. Now, I recommend you combine this with what I showed you earlier, where you give it your writing style and your tone for different use cases and save that to memory. You combine that with these custom instructions or any of these default options. I think they only had like two or three before. Now they have a lot more. And once you save these, you don't have to prompt it every time to talk in a friendly tone, right? It knows how to do that and it combines that with your custom instructions as well as the about you section so you could tell it different things about you as well here. So if you haven't set up personalization, I definitely recommend it. At the very least, pick one of these 
But if you really want to get this dialed in, set up a custom instruction and fill out the about you section too. Now, the next one is ChatGPT temporary chats and it's an icon right up here. So if you turn this on, memory gets disabled for this chat and it also doesn't appear in search history. Now, I hardly used this before because I didn't really mind if it was in chat history, but the memory part is actually a big deal because if you're having a conversation or if you're running a scenario that actually shouldn't be remembered or affect your account, well, this makes a lot of sense to do. The memory is disabled, so it won't affect your account. This next one is super helpful. It's actually a company knowledge base that comes with the business plan. So here in my business plan, you'll see this tab right here. So if you click on it, it will pull in things from your company knowledge base, which is really, really useful. So for example, I give it access to our Dropbox. We also give it access to our Google Calendar. So it knows our schedule here. Our Teams plan has multiple people on it. So we could all share that information here in a central location. And you could also give it access to your Gmail, your box, and they have a ton of different connectors. I mean, it's kind of a big list of connectors that you could give it access to. We're actually gonna add Slack next year so it could pull in from Slack conversation. That's what we use here in our team. Any of these options, Box, GitHub, HubSpot, all those are available too. And then every time you have a conversation, it will go and look into your company knowledge base in addition to everything else. So it can combine web search with your internal knowledge base here. So if you do have a business plan, this is hugely helpful. And since we're talking about using ChatGPT's company knowledge base, if you wanna put that into practice at work and also get a lot more practical use cases, check out this free resource from HubSpot called ChatGPT at work. This is one of the most practical ChatGPT walkthroughs that I've seen online. It includes just about everything to get the most out of ChatGPT at work across every role. It covers writing and editing, research, customer support, data tasks, and even how to automate some of your daily workflows. My favorite section is actually 100 ways to try ChatGPT today. It's literally a list of 100 practical prompts you can use across everything from ideation to marketing to sales. Number 69 is actually perfect for the feature I just showed you because it helps you get more out of your knowledge base. It asks ChatGPT to provide recommendations for improving internal knowledge sharing and communication along with any specific challenges you want to include. You can download this full guide for free using the link in the description. A big thanks to HubSpot for making these resources available and for sponsoring this video. Now the next one is also under settings. It's actually apps and connectors. So ChatGPT could connect to a lot of different apps right inside of ChatGPT. Now these are not the ones like I showed you where it connects to a knowledge base. These are actually totally different. So it says browse apps. So all these apps are available inside of ChatGPT. So it's a little bit like the app store. You have a phone, you have lots of different apps. You could open those apps. They do different things for you. Well, this browse app section lets you kind of do the same thing, but inside of ChatGPT. And they recently rolled out new ones from Adobe. But this is a huge list of different apps here. So this is how it works. All you have to do is type in the add mention sign inside of chat and it'll pull in pretty much all these apps that are available and basically get them to do things for you. So you could use Photoshop. All these Adobe products recently just got rolled into it. And then it links directly to Adobe Photoshop on the web, for example, where you could do further editing here. I'll use Khan Academy and let's see if it knows anything about writing basic expressions, a math problem that Khan Academy is really good at. And it's connected to Khan Academy and there it is. We got ourselves a math problem here that we could try to solve. And you could also have a follow-up chat here using ChatGPT. But the ability to pull in all these different kinds of apps that do unique things that ChatGPT just does not do makes ChatGPT a whole lot more useful. Now, the next one on my list is actually part of these custom GPTs here. So let me jump into one that I created a while ago. And this is something that a lot of people don't know. So you can actually change which AI model these are being powered by. So I had created a lot of these with ChatGPT 4.0 but you can now change those. So if I go to edit this custom GPT here, I could right here recommend a different model. So when people use it, they don't use the old chat GPT models. And instead, let's say they use GPT 5.2 thinking, which right now 
is the best model available. I'm sure if you watch this later, they're gonna have a new one. But usually you want the latest model to power these. And then every time I've done this, I've gone and changed my custom instructions because some of the older custom instructions that work well with 4.0 no longer work with the five models. And then when you use it as a user, if you are sending these to other people or if you find any of them here, well, you could also choose a different model here too. So if they didn't recommend a model, it just picks one for you, but you could force it to use a thinking model when you're using this custom GPT. By default, a lot of them don't use a thinking model. So the answer is just decent. But if you turn on the thinking model, sometimes the answer out of these GPTs become a lot better. The next one I wanted to show you is you could actually create several different images using the image model inside of ChatGPT. So you don't have to do that one at a time before you used to have to wait, wait till an image got created. But now you could literally send out different images. And just like that, I got all four just back to back to back. And the new image model inside of ChatGPT is a lot faster. It's actually four times faster than the last image model they had. So this becomes a whole lot more useful now by typing in multiple prompts. And instead of waiting for one image at a time, you get all of them here back to back and you could just download or edit them from here. Now the next one actually creates little mini apps for you. So if you press the plus sign and you turn on the canvas mode here, canvas mode can do a lot of different things. I could make an entire video on how to use canvas mode. But for this use case, I'm gonna ask you to make me a little to-do list app. And this will follow pretty detailed prompts too. So with canvas mode turned on, when you send out a prompt like this, it actually goes to a whole different mode and he starts writing code for you, which again, you don't have to read or worry about because you'll get this preview option as soon as this content gets generated. And there it is, it's created this whole functioning app for us, make a video, let's add that, there it is. So this is just one example, but it could actually create really useful things for you. And you could also share these here. You could make different sections for your website and embed them in your website. I do this all the time. It's one of my favorite things inside of ChatGPT. Now the next one is actually combining deep research with your own knowledge base. So if you press the plus sign here, you could use deep research. And if you haven't used this before, it's one of the best things in AI. It's an agent that goes and searches sometimes 100, 200 websites to respond to a single request here and gives you a really detailed, sometimes 20 page report with sources. But by itself, it's pretty good. When it becomes really good is if you click this and you give it access to other things. So I could give it access to everything inside of my Dropbox, for example, which again, we have a ton of different information there, or I could connect it to other apps. Remember, you could connect it to all kinds of different apps here with these different connectors. So then not only will it be able to search the web and work like deep research has always worked, it will also be able to pull in and combine different sources of information you have internally at your company or at your work, making it a whole lot more useful. Okay, this next one is a little bit newer, but anytime you talk to ChatGPT, especially if you have a paid version of ChatGPT, with the free version, this does happen in the background. With, with the paid version, it chooses the latest GPT model, whatever that ends up being, and then it uses auto, which means it automatically decides, should I instantly respond or should I take my time to think about it? I think at least right now with this version of ChatGPT, it doesn't do that good of a job. So what I've done is I've always changed mine to be on the thinking model. Unless I'm ju just doing basic web searches, I switch it back. But here's where it gets really good. Click this option right here and you could change it to extend it. What's the best way to market a local music menu? Give me only the best option. Typically, if you just have it to auto, it will answer you almost instantly because it has this type of stuff in its knowledge base. But this one will take time to figure out exactly what the best answer is here. And in this case, it recommended building an email and messaging list for our market. So this one actually answered us pretty quickly. Sometimes with the extended thinking, it will take a whole minute. But let me show you one other thing. I just jumped into a different account that I pay $200 a month for. Definitely not for everyone, but if you have very critical work here and you want the very best of the best, you could actually do a couple of things. You could turn on the thinking model, but with that plan, you get this other one called heavy, even longer analysis for hardest questions. So this one actually has saved me a couple of times 
where my paid plan, my teams and business plan, those plans did not quite give me the answer I was looking for with the extended version. On top of that, with the business plan and the pro plan, you also get this pro, which is research grade GPT model, which they've had for a while now. And then you could combine that with extended thinking. And that literally will give you the best possible answer in AI right now, if you combine the pro version with this one. Now the business plan, which is $30 a month, also comes with a little bit of a pro version here, but the $200 plan gives you a lot more usage out of the pro version. Again, probably not for 95% of the people, but the 5% of people that really heavily use ChatGPT can benefit from combining either the pro version with extended thinking or the thinking version with the heavy thinking, really pushing ChatGPT to its full capabilities. Now I got one really useful bonus one for you that probably everyone's gonna be able to use. So a lot of times you're having a conversation with ChatGPT, let's say you're brainstorming an idea. Well, now you could go left with the idea or you could go right. Well, which one do you choose? Well, you don't have to choose. You could click these three dots in the conversation and branch that into a new chat. So now you take one direction with this chat and you take a whole different direction with the other chat. Now you have two chats that are saved and I recommend now you save those to a project so that project will know everything about what's going on in a big picture. So if you start a third chat, that project will know that. And all you have to do is press the three dots for that, move it to a project, create a new project, move those conversations there, and that project will have all the context of everything about this topic moving forward. So that's my hidden list right now of ChatGPT tricks that should save you a ton of time. Hopefully some of those were new to you. And I'll share one more resource with you. We have an entire learning platform called Skill Leap where I put together things in a very linear order inside of courses along with other instructors. So we have 30 courses and we have entire learning path that put things in linear order course by course as well. We have a ton of downloadable resources, entire prompt libraries, and we add new courses every single month. You get access to literally the entire platform and every new feature and every new course and learning path and the community for a monthly subscription. And we have a free seven day trial right now to make sure you jump in there, you get a lot of use out of it, see if it's a good fit for you and stick around. If it's not a good fit for you, you cancel during trial and not get charged. So I'll put a link in the description to that as well. And if you like this video, let me know so I could make refresher every few months for this because they roll out all kinds of useful things. A lot of times it's not clearly communicated. I mean, I keep track of this stuff daily, but most people don't. So they miss a lot of these big updates. I also made another video covering literally every feature inside our ChatGPT in a single video, and I'll link that over here.